The Electoral Commission has disqualified 13 presidential hopefuls. It says it plans to hand over those who sign more than one form to the police for possible fraud. The EC chair at a news conference on Monday explained the subscribers in some instances signed a nomination form of more than one nominee using different signatures. Our colleague Joseph Akaple has more in the following report. Activities for the day commence with the commission receiving filing fee from presidential nominees. The GFP Sequiadonko was the first to present a fee, followed closely by Akwesia De Odike of the UPP, Kwabne G of the RPD. NPP's Director of Elections Martin A.J. Mensakosa presented on behalf of the party's flag bearer, Nanado Danko Akufuado. NDC General Secretary John Sinesiedu Nketia presented a fee on behalf of President John Dramani Mahama, followed by Dr. Henry Light of the GCPP and independent nominee Jacob Osayeboa. IPP presidential nominee Kofi Akpalu arrived surprisingly with cash in a jute bag rather than the banker's draft requested by the EC. The commission rejected the money after which Mr. Akpalu presented a banker's draft of 3000 for the presidential portfolio. He, however, failed to present a banker's draft for the party's 23 parliamentary nominees. The IPP flag bearer is, however, threatening to sue the EC for rejecting the cash he offered. Because we have the we use cash to pay goods and services in Ghana. So I don't see anything wrong. So as they are not dollars, they are not uh, safer, they are not Naira, and they are Ghana City, they should be accepted by any institution. How about you? How, how will you feel? How will you feel if you carry cash to go and buy something at the shop and they, they decide not to pick it? How will you feel? Are so will you be coming back with a banker? Ghana City doesn't work any longer. So I will you be coming back with a banker? Yes, yes. But I've sent my guys to go to the bank and compare it to the check they want. Why didn't you do that? Yeah, yeah because we came from Kumasi. Because but that's where our head of is. So we have to travel all the way from Kumasi. By the time we got here, it was 20 minutes to top club. And we have to work because we can't go to the bank. I do that. You could communicate with the ICO on that. I sent, I sent them a test message yesterday. So why did you do that? Reply. So to my test, so I have to quickly rush here. So why didn't you do it in Kumasi? No, my brother, I collected the money and then want me to go and waste time. I don't know where the money from. You collected yeah, the money from so many people. So many people because so many people gave me the money. A CBP team led by party chairman arrived about two minutes to the 12 noon deadline, but without a filing fee. They, however, managed to present it eventually. The moment many had not anticipated came at 3 p.m. when EC Chair Charlotte Osei announced that as many as 13 nominees who presented a form to the commission had their forms rejected for various reasons, adding that those who have committed electoral offenses on the forms of nominees won't go scot free. As stated earlier, again, the signatures on the forms of these voters on Dr. Mahama's forms are different from the ones on Dr. Yariga's forms. This again raises questions as to the legitimacy of those signatures. And we will be referring the matter of the possible forgeries of these signatures to the Ghana Police Service and the Attorney General for investigation and prosecution in line with the law. Speaking to Joy News afterwards, PPP National Secretary Mutala Mohammed said the party will decide the next line of action once it officially receives a letter from the EC explaining the reasons for rejection. The PPP still doesn't know the reason why it has been disqualified. So whatever adjective I'm going to describe about our feeling now won't solve any problem. As far as I'm concerned, when I was filing my nomination forms, I submitted it to EC. So when the EC is disqualifying me, it is fair that it gives me the reason why it is disqualifying me, not to tell the media, and now you are asking me, I don't know. As I speak to you, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm disqualified. I came for the, the reasons, they don't even have it. They are telling me they will send it through my email. So I'm still waiting until I have the reasons. I have nothing to say. I don't think the party can even have an opinion. And there have been swift reactions from the disqualified presidential hopefuls. Well, the flag bearer of the Independent People's Party, Kofi Akpalu, is obviously outraged. The EC chair dared to disqualify him from contesting the upcoming elections. The IPP flag bearer was disqualified because one of the persons who signed his forms was said to have also signed a form for another aspirant. You know, the check you do, 
is that you get a person's uh, voter's ID. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? You do everything. You check the number with the 6363 to verify that it, the, the, the card is actually because some of like, it's valid. Are you okay? And if that is done, that's all. You finish the work. You move on to the next person because you have two weeks. Are you okay? To get 432 people to endorse this form. Mm -hmm. Like a case like Pakosin Dooms uh, own, yeah? You see, to me, it's not deliberate. It's, it's not deliberate that Pakosin Dooms wanted somebody to sign for Muta region and at the same time sign for uh, Central region. But it will look so easy. It's four big forms you are failing. Are you okay? You are under pressure to get this form filled. Are you okay? And then when the person signed here, are you okay? In one region? In, 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 on one page. I mean, you might easily write the person's uh, name in another form because you copy from here to here. You have to copy to four books. Four books. 432. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Registered voters. You are filling their details in four books. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not a, a joke. So, like, I was seeing this one. To me, it's an oversight. Are you okay? Yeah. And look at it, it's an oversight. Yeah, it's but, an error. But, but, but the law is the law. Oh, no. What law? We are talking about oversight. That is administrative oversight. No, I'm, I'm, giving in your instances. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you instances. Mm -hmm. How will I know? How will I know? How will you know? Possibly know. Assuming you are a candidate. And then beginning this form and going around to get Ghanaians to endorse two, two from each district of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then you meet this person. He endorses it for you. How will you know that he has, uh, you go back and endorse another person? And a grand agenda by the Electoral Commission to get rid of parties critical of the Mahama government. And that's the reaction of the NDP Communications Director, N.S. Ousu Bempa, to the EC's decision to reject the nomination of its flag bearer, Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlins. Well, soon after news broke about the EC's rejection of the nomination forms of some 13 presidential aspirants, including PPP's Dr. Papakwesi Indum, John News sought to get the reaction of the affected parties to the news. Uh, here's Ernest Meno with more. We are here at the party headquarters uh, to get the reaction of Dr. Indum himself. We are told that he is not available for an interview. However, party officials will be addressing the media uh, shortly to give us their re response or reaction to the uh, announcement by the Electoral Commission that Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum of the Progressive People's Party has been, uh, his nomination has been rejected by the Electoral Commission and therefore he cannot contest in the 2016 elections. As you can see, uh, a lot of the party executives are trooping in the rank and file of the party uh, just to make sure that they get uh, some good response to the electoral commission already we are picking up information that uh, they want to challenge this and so uh, pretty shortly we'll be speaking to party officials to get their response on policy advisor of the ppp kofia samuasion registered his party's displeasure at the action of the ec saying they erred in law and hinted of plans to challenge the decision so 9-2 says that when there is the, the invalidity of your nomination is when the nomination form is not subscribed according to law, and that is where Madam Shulessa is coming from, and also when the persons who subscribed are not um, supposed to be subscribing to your nomination. And the law didn't end there. It says at 3 that when there is such development, the returning officer shall notify the, the candidate of any mistakes that is on the form. And then you shall give an opportunity to the candidate for amendments and alteration. And the candidate must, within the nomination period, come back and rectify it. So as we stand here, the Electoral Commission has not given us any notice to come and correct any mistakes they found on our form. No notice, in fact, was issued to anybody in Ghana as far as problems with their nomination forms are concerned. So on what basis is the Electoral Commission disqualifying Dr. Parker Syndrome? When you have not told us that this thing was wrong, come and correct it. So the EC should read its law properly. It is when you give the notice and the candidate is not able to come and do the correction within seven days, then the commission takes a decision. The commission cannot take 
the nomination period and say we are going to vet it within seven days. They misread the law. They have misread their own law. But, but why did you in the first place uh, not double check to make sure that you don't have one subscriber appending to two double documents? Double check, triple check. That is why. If you find something wrong, you notify us. So the EC has not notified you. There's a press conference that tells us you've been disqualified. What, what is your next line of action? You have just up to Friday. Um, I think this one should be obvious to everybody. We, we are, like I said earlier, we are getting the, we go to the electoral commission, get the full detail of what um, was supposed to have been said at the press conference. There should be some official uh, notice to our party, and then we take it from there. I mean, there are courts in this country, and the reasons why they were established is that if your rights are trampled upon in this case, and you see, this is a very serious matter. This is nomination for the office of president of the republic. You don't go and misread your law and come and disqualify anybody like that. So we know what to do. Well, we have to go to the Upper East region where some women engage in straw basket weaving are appealing to the Office of the Export Development and Agricultural Investment Fund, EDIF, to furnish some shelters the fund started for them and uh, which really are yet to be completed. Well, the women who currently weave their baskets under trees say harsh weather often disrupts their work and this affects their profits and their livelihoods. We go over to our correspondent who's filed this report. Albert Sorry has more. The Bogatanga Basket Weavers Cooperative Club, of which the women are members, submitted a proposal to the Export Development and Agriculture Investment Fund, EDIF, and got funding to start building shelters for the women who currently sit under trees to weave. The first tranche of funding was not enough to complete the structures. At Sumbrungu, several of the structures are at the lintel level. No windows and doors have been fixed and the buildings have not been roofed, exposing them to harsh weather. The women sit under trees close to the buildings to weave their straw baskets. They want work on the structures to be fast-tracked so they can have access to and make good use of them. We have been weaving under this tree for a very long time. Sometimes the shade is not enough for us especially when it is very sunny and when the hamatan comes we can't even sit here and work because the wind distracts us they came and started this structure for us so we are praying that they finish it for us so that we won't have to struggle this much any longer <laughs> Farming is not lucrative, so we weave the straw baskets and sell them to be able to cater for our children. We pay their school fees, buy their books and provide food for them through this trade. But weaving under the tree comes with a lot of challenges, especially when there is a new design we are supposed to weave. We need to be in our numbers so we can teach each other but that is not easy under the tree. It affects the orders we get from customers. Anytime it rains, we can't sit here and weave. So we are very, very happy when they came and started this building for us. We are grateful for the work done so far, but we are pleading that they complete it for us so that some of our colleagues who often go to Kumase to look for work can stay back home and join us. Manager of the Bogatanga Basket Weavers Cooperative Club, Charles Asabila, explains what went into the building of these shelters and what is needed to complete them. Actually, we put a proposal to Export Development and Agriculture Investment Fund. And they actually look at it, they came 
we took them around and they realized that yes, if they help these people put up uh, these buildings for them, it will actually help them. One, they can't uh, sit together to weave. And because of that, uh, anytime you give them orders, how to produce and get them was a problem. So we took them around and actually we approved building seven new craft centers for us. And one of them is this one. And five ones, uh, they were to re renovate five of them. So in all, there are about 12 buildings that they are putting together. And they said uh, the monies were to be disbursed in uh, tranches. So the first tranche is uh, what was given and we have been able to put up to this level. Albert Sorry, Joy News, Bolgatanga. And that's it for the news this morning. As always, you can interact. And um, we have a page on Facebook, Join News on TV. We've linked that page to our Twitter handle, Join News on TV. And you can also interact with us on WhatsApp. Our platform number is 0560 800,000. All right, we've got the newspapers up next here on our show. Stay with us.